our sisters. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this body of believers that you blessed us all with, Father God. Have your way in my sisters, Lord, as they speak your word. Let it touch the ones it needs to touch, Lord. Soften the hearts of the ones that need to be softened, Lord. Bless this time, Lord. Fill this place with your Holy Spirit. Ready our hearts to receive, Lord. And have your, have your way, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Can everyone hear me? Hear me okay? Yes. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> what a privilege it is to sit before you. Um, we're sitting here um, humbled by the Lord that um, we are able to be used by the Spirit of God to share. Um, if, you're, if you don't know already, we are sharing on the church economy. Our brothers shared last week, and this week we'll be sharing on the church economy, and we will um, share on being a daughter, a sister, and a mother, spiritual daughters, spiritual sisters, and spiritual mothers. So um, as we start, get my notes just a second. Um, this is the second time actually we've done this. And um, I'll be honest with you, the first time we did it, I didn't really understand church economy, like the term church economy, because I always associated economy with finances or something having to do with money or something like that. And so the, the Lord prompted me to look deeper into that. And um, I would like to share with you what he shared with me regarding the church economy. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is church economy? The word economy does not necessarily refer to financial matters. Um, the word economy actually translated in the Greek means manager of a household or manager. And it's how resources are managed, distributed, and dispensed. So God's economy is the household administration of himself through Christ to the resources within the body of Christ. We, his children, are God's resources, resources or vessels, instruments of righteousness, to be used in the kingdom for the glory of God. We are not the source, but rather vessels filled with his spirit, positioned and used by our Father for his good pleasure to do the works that he has planned for us in advance. Similar to natural family relationships, right? We have children, sons and daughters, siblings, brothers and sisters, parents, mothers and fathers, so it is also in the body of Christ, spiritual daughters, spiritual um, brothers and sisters, spiritual um, mothers and fathers. All of those come into play because it is the family. Actually, the natural family reflects God's perfect and divine order in the spirit. So in the spirit, how much more so do we have that order of the spiritual parent? brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. These relationships are and how they are used and walked out are part of the family order of God. They are by God, for God, and through God because the spirit of God resides in his vessels. The provision of God is in the house of God for the people of God. He provides for us, through us, by his spirit. 
And we have the spirit of God dwelling in us, not just us, but in you as well. We walk out spiritual relationships for the glory of God. So like I said, last week were the brothers. This week are the sisters, praise God. And so um, how this is going to work today is that each one will share. And after uh, one will share, we will have time to open it up for questions, um, you, about one or two questions, actually. But we will be led by the Spirit, praise God, Lord willing, right? And then um, the, the way the Lord has us doing this is that we're going to actually fellowship. This is a fellowship, right? We are all used to fellowship and, and the blessing of a fellowship, right? So um, as, as we share, as our sisters share, we are going to... Um, we are going to be blessed by those spiritual relationships that the Lord provides for within the family of God. So I would like to start off with a question, and we'll start off with uh, spiritual daughters, which is my sister, Rachel, praise God. And um, well, before I go there, let me, let me um, back up a little bit. There are two scriptures that the Lord gave me in terms of um, the church economy, God's economy. And it's Ephesians 2, 18 through 22. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer foreigners and strangers. And I will say the Lord had me rest in the uh, foreigners and strangers, uh, foreigners from another group, an outsider. If you know the Lord, you are no longer an outsider. You are known by the Lord, and you know him. Praise God. No, are you, nor are we a stranger, because a stranger is a person who is not a member of a family, a group, or a community. Praise God, that is not us. That was us, but it's no longer us. Praise God. But fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ, him, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the spirit. And the second scripture is Romans 8, 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Do you know that um, with an adoption, as, a per, as opposed to a natural birth, it is more difficult to revoke an adoption. I don't even think you can. I'm not sure of that, but I don't think you can. Your natural born children, you can actually leave them somewhere and your, your responsibility to them is done. You can do that, but not with a legal adoption. We have been adopted into the family of God. And so with that adoption is we are legally his. We belong to him. So praise God. So God's spirit, when he adopted us, or when he adopted you as his own children, now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. So in that, um, my sister Rachel will share. Um, and I just, to start it off a little bit, I'm going to pose a question. And as the Lord leads you, um, this is just food for thought, if you will. So what does it really mean to be an heir of the Father? to be included versus excluded. 
no longer a stranger or a foreigner, but actual legal citizens of the kingdom of God with all the rights of citizenship. Well, praise God, because um, that's the, I think that that's the fleshly fear is to be asked a question, especially when everyone's watching. Um, but we rely upon the Lord, right? Um, and so I thank God because the, the scripture to that, right, is, um, is in Romans 3.22 and 3.26. Now, you know, we came prepared with notes, but, um, but I did not come prepared with that question. Praise God. And it comes with um, what is the greater relationship, and that's what the Lord was showing me, is to be right, to be made right in standing with God. Um, to be in right standing with God, rather. Um, so in Romans 3, verses 22 through 26, I'm going to read that. So the question, again, was how are we no longer foreigners and strangers, right? But fellow, fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household. Okay. So I'm going to read the scripture. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, and that's powerful. <laughs> Praise God, right? Yet God, because if he just left it there, there would be no hope. There would be no relationship. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. Now, if any of you are feeling like, I don't have any sins, I'm just going to help you here. <laughs> we have all sinned. <laughs> we have all sinned, yet God freed us from the penalty for our sins through Christ Jesus. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. Praise God. Praise God. I was in fellowship right before this. Like, we don't know that we need God. You know, we compare like, oh, can you believe what we did before, right, sis? Like how we struggled before with even sickness without God. Yet God in his mercy and in his grace has brought us into relationship with him. He did this, I'm going back to the scripture, God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. So, again, to go back to the question, because I want to make sure that I'm actually answering the question with, um, how are we no longer foreigners? We've been made right right? We have been called into relationship with Christ. Um, we can't do that um, without first seeing our need for Christ. And then we need to see our need for Christ in others. Um, so in that, we're no longer strangers. I think about the time when, because um, this is all really new to me. I'm, I come from a big family. I want to be mindful of the time, but I came from a very large family, one of eight kids. Um, and I have, um, I love my family, but I didn't know how to be a family member, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I felt like a stranger in my own home. Um, and I felt like a foreigner. You know, I felt like, you know, the question was always, am I adopted? <laughs> am I really that different? Right? Um, but yet God has now removed the flesh and the need to, um, to self-satisfy the need to want to live my, a life my own way that I now desire God. I'm no longer a stranger. I can recognize my spiritual family coming here. Everybody's like, hey, sis. I think of Pastor Tommy was the first one that I can remember being, hey, sis. And I thought, why are you calling me sis? I don't, like, it, did, it, couldn't, it couldn't register why he would call me that because God showed him ahead of time. <laughs> that I was part of this family of God. And so that's, um, uh, that's part of that question. So now I'm no longer a foreigner or a stranger. Um, now when I'm out and I see someone who I would say is a stranger, like I met in the parking lot one day, and she said, um, how are you doing today? And I said, 
I'm blessed. And she goes, praise God. And we fellowshiped over the Lord. We were no longer strangers, right? Like we recognize that relationship is Christ. Um, so um, does that answer the question though fully? Yes. <laughs> praise God. Yes, I, I think, um, praise God, um, because it was that we have been called into the relationship. We have been called into the family. So because of that, we are no longer strangers. Just like I said before, once we were, we are no longer. Once we weren't a people, now we are a people. And we have the same father. And he has brought us into relationship. We didn't bring ourselves. So because of that, we are now um, we are now members of the family. We are all citizens of the kingdom of God and all the rights and all the privileges that come with that. And praise God, he has filled us with his spirit. He's given us his Holy Spirit because we belong to him, right? So, yes, sister, you did um, answer that question. So praise the Lord. Um, did any other sisters want to share anything the Lord is stirring? Because then I'm going to open it up for a couple of questions. I, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, I think just in relationship to the heirs and um, where we fit in is, okay, I'm an heir. I'm receiving that. But now, like you were speaking, like, what's my place, right? and understanding um, the position in the family, like you were saying. And in all of our positions, lean back to, I'm a child of God. So I think in that, like, like how does that feel to be a child of God? Like the workings of it, that's in, um, no, I'm not asking that. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, what does that look like? Is that, um, is that, was that expressed, I guess, through your answer in your position as a child of God to Stacy? And that's what I'm wondering because if they're going to ask, they're asking you as a as a child, right? So that's that's what I'm kind of bringing. Well, praise God because I was like, oh, I have so much more to share. <laughs> but um, but even us um, um, and. Please bear with me. Um, there's a lot happening, and um, and I, I want to just be obedient with the Lord. Um, I am a child of God. I am his daughter, and um, and he has provided every need that a child would not have for a father, a mother, a sister, um, even a daughter, right? Um, because as it's been shared before, um, these roles are interchangeable, Um you know, at one time, you may be a sister to me, but then the next, you may be my spiritual mother, right? Remember, we're talking spiritually, not um, not the natural relationships. Um, but as a child of God, what the Lord was speaking to me is, one, he's met all my needs. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I think it would be foolish to think I have everything I need without God. Um, we need God. Um and, and as his child, we can turn to the Father with every need, um, every need, you know, even just the simplest things. Um, but they're always part of that which is bigger, which is, Lord, I need you to trust you. I need you to depend upon you. I need you in this time um, of counsel. And so what the Lord was showing me was, um, was one is, as a child, I could never say or think I have no further need for counsel. And um, in that, then I was reminded of the physical, right, which is I can't wait till I get out of this house. <laughs> I can't wait till I leave my family. And for what purpose, right? It's usually so that I can make my own decisions, right, so that I don't have somebody pushing back, so that I can be free, so to speak, um, to do whatever I wanted. Um, <laughs> but as a child of God, he has completely shifted my heart. Right now, there's no longer a desire to be away from the father, to be away from the spiritual mothers, the spiritual fathers. Right? I can't neglect the the brothers and um, 
in that portion too, in the um, the sisters, I I need God. Um, so recognizing your need for a father is important because then you can recognize your need for a sister or for a brother in Christ. Um, and um, in the scripture the Lord gave me was um, in Proverbs 1, verses 8 through 9. Um, it says, my child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. I have been corrected many times, <laughs> many times in the natural, but in the phys or in the spiritual, there has been adding to me, right? There has been, I have been crowned with grace when I have been corrected. Ronnie, Pastor Ronnie is a good example because she's used to, to, we say correct, but it's really, there's a gentleness there. It is a, it is a redirection, but it causes, um, it causes me to slow down and say, um, what am I operating in? What am I, what am I really seeking? What am I really desiring? And that's, um, that's what a mother should do is nurture their child. Um, so who am I as a child to recognize that position to say, well, I don't need that from you, right? I don't want to stiff arm Christ. I want to receive what he has from my spiritual mothers, from my spiritual sisters, right? And because of the focus is on that right now, that's what I'm going to touch on. You can't say, I'm, I'm going to be a spiritual mother. That sounds good. I, I nurture, right? No, you're a child. <laughs> you have to come like a child to the father. You know, um, he desires his children to be close. And so in turn, as a child, I need to recognize my need for God. Um, and in that, I can now see the order that um, as I'm being poured into by my spiritual mother, that I can submit to that and say, yes, Lord, whatever you have for me in this, because sometimes it, it just doesn't feel good to the flesh. I'm just like, but I thought, you know, I've shared this, but one time I was like, Pastor Ronnie was like, you're really not gentle, sis. And I'm like, kind of, I mean, maybe a little bit, <laughs> you know, you want to, you want to try to justify, you know, you want to try to feel like I am a little bit, but that's the, that's what, um, that's what the nurturing comes in. And even the sharpening that comes through the sisters, right? To say, no, we're, let's redirect and point back. We're not gentle without the Lord. And if the Lord is highlighting an area in our life that needs growth, then we could say, praise God, Lord, help me um, use this and, and give me a heart of humility that truly desires um, to be um, poured into um, as a child of God, as a daughter in Christ. Is she muted back there? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister Bonnie, um, for being used by the Lord to provoke that and so that that would come out. I pray that um, everyone was blessed by that. Um, so now we'll open it up for one to two questions. Esther? We're going to bring a mic to you, sis. Uh, this question is for Rachel. If you can give us an elaborate on how to be a sister and a mother to our children, those in the household, what does that look like? So be a mother, what's it look like to be a mother and a sister as a child of God first? As a child of God first to your young like ones, my natural to your children. children, yes. Yeah, because that is a unique, right, um, position. <laughs> I am a mother to children who are children of God. So, right, so understanding that, that I am now on level playing field with my children, <laughs> you know, they are not below me in spiritual terms, yet they are in the natural order below me. Um, one of the, is that um, that's difficult to comprehend without the Lord showing, you know. So if you're struggling, you know, ask the Lord to reveal it to you. Um, 
He is faithful to do, to do that. Um, but what does it look like? I mean, it's, um, you know, I want to be mindful of, um, of what that looks like, right? Because and how to even answer it, sis. Is that it is in fellowship with Christ, right? There has to be a sensitivity of, Lord, um, I think of the question is, what do they need? Right? What do they need right now? It isn't, um, you know, my child may be, I have three children, you know, one of them being a toddler. You know, she may be having a full fit, um, but I need to know what is spiritual rather than coming at it in the natural first. Um, you know, if she's in danger, I'm going to naturally have to grab her. But, but everything takes place spiritually. So, Lord, show me, does she need correction here? Does she need grace? Does she need mercy? And a lot of times we're just doing things fast, you know? So I don't want you to get caught up in being like, I need to stop and have these intense moments with the Lord. Because when you think about it, if I'm in passing and I got to get somewhere quick and I say, hey, I need you to grab this for me real quick, right, right? You know, we're, we're not taking these stop and, and slow down. We're, um, we're in relationship first. So we know what the other one can handle. Um, and so... Um, so for my children, I know what they can handle. I know, um, I know what, um, what they need, um, because I'm asking the Lord what they need and he's faithful to show us. Um, so I hope that answers your questions. I'm going to open it up to my sisters because I feel like there may be more clarity could be given. Um, I just wanted to, um, just affirm that answer with the equality at at the foot of the cross, because um, our children in the natural are our spiritual brothers and sisters. So we are called to steward them in this relationship in the natural, but they are our brothers and sisters. So in in knowing that spiritually, we realize because the Spirit has revealed that, that everything is spiritual. So to walk in that when there's an issue or when there's a concern or something's going on, we know by the Spirit of God that that's a spiritual issue. So I'm not really saying anything new. I'm just affirming what my sister has said. The encouragement is to go to the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, what am I seeing? What is going on? What are you speaking in this? How do I address this? And the Lord, because he's so faithful to himself, will guide us in that. Because raising children, knowing that there are brothers and sisters in the spirit, is not separate from one another. They actually are together. And so we don't look at it separately. Like, oh, this is my, this is my brother or sister in Christ, but I'm a parent. And what I do parentally is different. No, it's the same because it's all in the Lord. So I just wanted to share that little bit. Yeah, I'll just add a little just because um, when you mentioned the order, um, like that is something that we see naturally, like right away, right? From um, being a child, the awareness, we're all children of God. And then seeing um, what where God has placed us in the relationship and knowing, okay, obviously from the time they're born, we know there are children. So we, we see that order. Um, so I really like that you had brought that up because um, that awareness doesn't give us the entitlement, right? To be like, oh, they're mine. Because that's what we hear as soon as we have them. My child, right? Your children. And it's no, we all belong to God. So in that, we're going into it, into the relationships with the awareness like, oh, they're a child of God too, just like me. So God, how do you want me to treat your child? How do you want me to um, steward these children because I can't just do what I want? Because sometimes I'm acting like a child to the father, like, I want this now for my children, right? And it's like, no, God, what do you want? Because it's your child. These are your children. So I just like that, that you brought that um, clarity there. I think I want to add also that um, this is the process of the renewing of the mind, right? Because we all grow up in our natural family, and we 
get the behaviors of our parents, right? So God comes in and renews our mind and teaches us what it is to live in the spirit and to parent in the spirit. So this is what I'm hearing as you guys are all sharing. Is Praise God for the work of God in each of us, that we get to parent and love like Christ. Um, so we said it was like fellowship, and this is really what happens. <laughs> but it's like you spoke, and I was, I was being reminded of character, the character of God, right? Like we take on the characteristics of the natural but now that we're not looking at the natural, we're looking at the spiritual, which is I'm a child of God. Um, if I'm in relationship with him, I'm going to have his characteristics, right? And we talk about that in the scriptures, the fruits, right? Well, you'll know them by their fruits, know them by their works. Um, yeah. Well, praise God, because I have the fruit of the spirit for my sister. Lindsay is right here, sister. So... <laughs> So as a sister, as a sister um, in the kingdom of God, how has the Lord um, filled you with his spirit and empowered you to walk that out? What does that look like? Man, God has done so much. <laughs> if you knew me from the beginning, right? Like, you know, there's been a work done. Um, he's given me all the fruits, right? We all, as we're filled, get all the fruits of the Spirit. And he's allowed me to um, learn through natural relationships, right? Like that we don't yoke up in the flesh. I don't, I don't go to my sisters because I can relate in the natural, right? Again, it's the renewing of the mind. It's living in the Spirit, right? Um, I had to walk that out with a sister. And even my natural sister, Danica, the one that prayed up here, that's my blood sister. But, you know, <laughs> the greater blood is Christ, all of you guys, right? It's richer. It's, this is the relationships I desire. The, the, those that do the will of the Father, that's who are my sisters and my brothers, my mothers, right? Um, but there was a point where... Um, as a big sis, you want to protect your little sister, right? You want to, when people hurt them, you want to hurt them back, right? Those that hurt them. And it's like God had to show me, like, this is not my way, daughter. <laughs> like, let me teach you how to live like me, you know? And so he had to come in and tear uh, my ways down and build me up in him. And so um, I don't know if this is answering the question, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to share what God put on my heart of what it is to be a sister in Christ. And like my role as a sister of what I'm called to do is to um, walk alongside you. I'm not going to run when things get hard, although I ain't going to lie, I have in the flesh felt that. Like, I can't do this, but then what am I doing? I'm depending on my own strength and my own ability, and God's like, depend on me. I've called you to be a sister to this sister, and I'm going to empower you and give you what you need to walk out life with them, you know? Um, so, and that goes into the next one, to do life with you. Man, you can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want, but I'm not going anywhere because God's not going anywhere, you know? We do all kinds of things to the Lord and say all kinds of things, unintentionally, unintentionally, but he remains. So as a spirit-filled sister, I will remain, you know, and I pray you guys remain as well. Um, so I'm going to give instructions founded on God's word, and I know he's teaching me this to really get in his word and, like, not just try to come up with an answer or think I have to have one, but really seek him and ask him what he wants me to say and what he wants me to share and what do you need to hear? Not from me, but from him. Um, again, to, courage, and to encourage you in the faith. We all need encouragement. As I'm listing these things, hold on, there's one more. And to model, to model, right, this life in Christ. Um, as I'm listing all these things, I, just, I was reminded of Jesus because this is what he did with the disciples. He walked alongside them. He did life with them. He ate with them. He fellowshiped with them, right? He gave them instruction, he encouraged them, and he modeled the life that he desired them to live, which now we get that same model, right? <laughs> we get to, um, he is our example. And so, um, 
let's see, there's a scripture I have somewhere written on here. Sorry, my notes are crazy. <laughs> and then last night I tried like getting them in order and I feel like I made it more crazy. But um, <laughs> um, uh, my prayer too is that like Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall be, um, see the Lord or see God. And then this is my prayer for myself and um, all of you is that we would grow in pureness of heart one day and one day stand before our God see him as the holy one and fall down and worship at his feet and this is what doing life together is it's an ironing sharpening iron right iron sharpens iron and I need each of my sisters I need all of you every single one there's some out here that I don't even know yet although we're united in the spirit I don't have to physically know but I desire to and that's a I can't again I have to be raw and honest like I there was a time where I was shy and I didn't want to, you know, I'm like, I don't know, like, but now there's this work that God has done that he's empowering me to tend to the needs of my sisters, to love them, to guide them, to lead them to Christ. Um, man, this whole week I've been in tears and just over this time of studying of the Lord and just seeing his hand on my life and him working in me, giving me the fruits of his spirit and the ability to lead my family to the Lord, because that's the greater thing. It's not about the natural anymore. Like, I always got stuck in like, I mean, I, it does struggle with my kids because I see the natural there. And I'm like, Lord, let me see your spirit because I know that work's being done just as I'm seeing him in all of you. He, it's being done in my kids. But it gets tested there the most because we see each other in the flesh the most, you know. And and then if I'm not seeing uh like you were saying, like a work being done in my time, right? Like I'm being a child to God. Like I need it now for my son, you know? But it's like, no, God's timing is perfect timing. So, um, yeah, like I'm, I love all of you. I love all of, and it's not just for my sisters because I love my brothers too. We need each other. Like we're called to do life together. We, we're not called to do it alone. I, I just pray that you're truly am encouraged um, to seek relationship because it's not, again, it's not in the flesh. It's in the spirit. Seek who you need to get under and to be encouraged, to be um, led to Christ. Um, I'm, he had put 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7, and I know it's for in the Bible. It's for marriage, right? But it, on the heading in my Bible, it said all Christians. It's not just for marriage. And, and we are married, all of us. <laughs> you know, we're all married, so it does go for all of us. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but it re rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. And I'm just like... Thank you, Lord, for your love first, because it first starts with him, right? Um, I think I wrote on here. <laughs> Let me find it. <laughs> oh, I put God's love first to me and then through me. I can't even love you guys without knowing the love that the Father has for me. And, and as I'm in relationship with God and his love continues to pour in me, it's pouring out through me to you, you know? So I just pray that the Lord, because we are binded in his love, right? We're, that's what the Holy Spirit is, what's binding us, and it's God's love that keeps us together. So if there's any offenses, if there's any things brewing in the heart, I just pray God's love cover it, you know, and that he put it in each of you to express it for freedom's sake and for a deeper unity um, because we're, we're one mind, one body, right? We're, I can't neglect you. I can't neglect a body part. We're called to go and uplift and encourage. And um, yeah, I'm just like, thank you, Lord, again, that we are one. We're one with the Father and we're one with one another. So may we not be separate. May we not exclude ourselves. And there may be a struggle, but may God empower you to embrace the Father and the Christ in each other, you know. Um, so yeah. Um, I praise God for that. And just um, encouraged because I'm like, man, all my brothers and sisters, though we, um, a lot of us get to walk out with Lindsay, it's like God is giving us a, just a beautiful picture of like what a sister in Christ looks like, right? And, um, hearing the heart of a sister in Christ. And, um, 
a lot of times when we're like, okay, well, let me look for that sister in Christ, it's through eyes of criticism, right? Like, oh, are they being a sister in Christ? Where I heard a sister in Christ say, say the prayer for all of us, right? But we should also look at ourselves and say, am I being a sister in Christ? Not are they being a or brother or sister in Christ that I want them to be. Because a true sister in Christ, like she's displaying here, says, Lord, let me endure through all circumstances. So as she was speaking that, I was stirring, that prayer was stirring in my heart, like, let that be me too, Lord. Let me endure through all circumstances. So I just praise God for that. Praise God. Um, one thing I wanted to add is um, it, it's the giving the love, right? The giving the love. And it's also being able to receive the love because I, in the natural, I don't have any sisters. So coming in to um, sisterhood in the spirit was very different. So, um, and I didn't know how to, initially I didn't know how to receive that. But I remember one day we were sitting um, doing the church remodel and um, a sound guy comes in and he thought, he goes, hey, do you, do you have a sister? And my natural response was, no. And then I think it was Michelle. She, she says, oh, she has a lot of sisters. And it's so true that I have so many sisters and I am so blessed that the Lord did not leave me in the um, natural perception of because I didn't have any sisters in the natural that I could not receive my sisters in the spirit. No, he took me from that into this by his spirit so now I know that I have sisters, but not only can I receive their love, are they giving me love, but I can receive their love and then reciprocate that love and the spirit back. So praise God. Yeah, I wanted to add to that because what was stirring was, um, um, you know, you think, well, if you're thinking the natural, you're going to be like, well, how do I apply this? Like, why do I need these spiritual relationships? Because if you're looking at it like, well, I have sisters and you may have a a, a sister who is good by all standards of the flesh, right? Who's there for you, who comforts you, who encourages you. Those are all good things that we desire, but um, but we have a greater need, which is Christ. Um, um, oh man, I wanted to find that. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, there must be humility in order to receive Christ. So you know, knowing that you first have a need, look apart or look away from the natural relationships, right? <laughs> a good example was our sister Stacy. I, um, I, I'll be vulnerable and honest with you. I loved, I still love my sister, but I struggled with my sister and receiving Christ from her for a long time. And I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. But the Lord was showing me that that cannot remain. Because what it did was now I'm viewing her and I'm comparing Christ in her and criticizing, right? We think, oh, I'm still receiving God. Yet in your heart, you're comparing and criticizing what Ronnie said. Like, you had to first see your own heart. Am I being a sister? And the Lord showed me I'm trying to keep her in a sister position when she's naturally coming in as a mother. You see why we need we need to be humbled before God so that we can then be humble before one another and receive Christ. Praise God. Um, so we're going to open it up for a couple of questions regarding sisters and sisterhood and the spirit. If anyone has a question. No one has a question. The Lord isn't stirring anything. Praise the Lord. All right. So <laughs> that means our sister Ronnie needs some extra time. The, <laughs> the Lord is allowing extra time for our sister Ronnie. Praise God. But um, so in that, um, we'll have sister Ronnie share about being a, a spiritual mother and um, praise God, praise God. So, sister, in um, 
in how the Lord has you walking in that, um, share what are, um, what is that really? And um, how have you seen it as a, a spiritual mother, as well as a sister, a daughter, and not just giving, but receiving as well? Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Praise God. Um, so a spiritual mother. I think like all, all of us are saying is um, seeing our need and um, seeing um, where our dependence is. So I have to depend on God in order to do anything. Um, he has to put it in me to receive, I belong to you, Lord. And, um, and now I get to be um, a sister in Christ, right? Um, and I get to be a, a spiritual mother. And not seeing any of those um, positions as burdensome, seeing it as a gift from God. And um, especially uh, for me, I think um, I always um, cherished the position of sisters, right? And um, what it looks like, what it could be, right? Um, um, those kinds of things. And then moving on to like, um, I always knew I wanted to be a mother. I, not necessarily a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but praise God. Because, you know, sometimes we know like, being a mother doesn't seem as committed as being a wife does. <laughs> but praise God for the truth. <laughs> Um, but, um, I don't know why I thought I, it seemed easier, right? It seemed easier. And then, um, when I became a mother, I'm like, oh man, this is not easy. And I wanted tons of children. I was just like, I want like the number 10 sounded good to me. Um, but, <laughs> but I was like, oh, that's not what the Lord has for me. And, um, not till I came into this family, um, I could get emotional over it, you know. I told my husband one day, the Lord gave me what I desired. He gave me what I wanted. And it was greater than I thought. You know, it was all, having all these um, sisters near me and them sharing their children with me. And it truly is greater spiritually because I don't know how to be a mother in the natural. Um, so um, dependence, back to dependence, right? And on the Lord and, um, and trusting his guidance, trusting he knows what's better for us, trusting when he says no, it's for a purpose because there's more to come, right? And um, um, I think just in, um, like you were saying, the, the giving and the receiving, um, it's really laying our children down um, to the Lord because, um, you know, we have a tendency to want to control. And um, that has to do with, while we think it's nurturing, right? We think it's protecting. Um, we think we know better. And it's like, oh, I don't know better. Like, I'm steering my children this way so they could avoid that when, like, he look what he let me go through. And look what he brought me to. He brought me to himself. So why am I trying to um, um, make my kids not go through anything bad when it's like, no, they need to re recognize they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> they need to recognize they're as evil as I am without the Lord, you know. So I think in that I've grown to to know um, what a spiritual mother is because in the natural it was really hard for my children to receive me because um, that just the correction, like 
Lindsay said, like the, um, you know, you see um, there are good attributes in our natural parents. And it's like, well, this is what I'm going to use. And then that's what I'm not going to use. Right. But sometimes what worked was because God fashioned me for it. Not that he fashioned my natural children for it. You know, maybe I need sternness, but, you know, I have a, um, both of my daughters, right, um, have these like soft, kind spots that I can't speak into naturally with the authority God gave me. <laughs> I have to come in and say, oh, Lord, like, help me um, because now we're hurting each other, you know. So that's um, what God has shown me, like, and, and my children can fully receive me spiritually now where before they didn't want to receive that, you know. So, um, and, and it's such a blessing to be a spiritual mother and to be able to pour in where um, there's a greater relationship because it's honest and everything is exposed and um, there's pureness where um, I'm no longer walking in judgment. My children can come to me and tell me anything and I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want to do with this? You know, um, not um, you should have, could have, you know, um, mentality that I had before or, you know, um, knowing when, when I'm depending on God as a mother, knowing when to discipline and then when to, um, when to actually um, correct and, oh, no, yeah, both of those, but... <laughs> <laughs> also when to give grace, right? To give grace and mercy. And um, and also needing to receive it. Because I can say, like, I'm not right. I remember one time, um, um, <laughs> you know, I'm in this conversation where playing tug of war with one of my children, right? And um, spiritually, not physically. <laughs> and it's like, just because I'm wrong doesn't make you right. And that only comes from God, that awareness, because one of us wants to be right. So it's like, let's come together and remember, like, only God is right. So I see that as, um, you know, a spiritual mother, knowing that, like, okay, who am I pointing to? So I came into this thinking, like, what was God's relationship with his mother, right? And um, there's a, um, a couple scriptures that come to mind, I'll just mention one, but um, of when, you know, um, at the wedding where um, Jesus's mother says like, hey, they're, they're out of wine, you know, and he's like, well, what's that our problem, you know, like, and, um, and she kind of just ignores him. And she's like, she knows her position as a mother. And she knows it's to point to his instruction, she knew what he was capable of, and I feel like as a, as you know, Christ leading, like as a mother, he gives us eyes to say, "I know what you're capable of," right? I see Christ in you. I know that um, um, he's God's working power is through you. So I'm going to tell you, do this. I'm going to tell you, you can do that. I'm going to tell you, it's time. You know, and um, and I believe that's what she did. And she may have not even like she didn't respond back to Jesus. Actually, she's like, hey, go and, you know, do what he says. And so there are times that I may do that as a as a spiritual mother and say, like, go and ask so and so for prayer because I know God moves through them. Right. And I know that he that he's going to come through through them. And um, that's only God that provides that insight to say, like, oh, I know what God is doing in, in these children. And um, so I praise God for that. But there are a couple of scriptures. But did you have something? Are we, like, on this, um, like, am I being clear right now? I'm not sure. Okay. I, I'm, I have clarity. Okay. I mean, I'm understanding. But one thing that God is stirring is the provoking Mm -hmm. to righteousness that's what mm -hmm. i'm hearing yeah. mm -hmm. is that um, part of that role is provoking others to uh, righteousness and to um going deeper and further as the lord empowers them but in your role as a spiritual mother when you see that then you're provoking them 
you know, you're saying just what you said, like, it's time, go here, do that. But it's not the vessel, it's the Lord through the vessel. And um, sometimes it's hard to receive that because sometimes we do get tripped up and we look at the vessel as opposed to, wait, that's the spirit of God speaking. Lord, help me to obey you and to submit to the spirit of God and not be distracted by the vessel you are choosing to use because God chooses the vessel that he uses. So that's what that's what was stirring, just the provoking to righteousness in that. And um, so I'll share the scripture. It's in John 19, um, 1925. It says, um, standing near the cross where Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, um, Mary, the wife of um, Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, here is your mother. And from then on, the disciple took her into his home. So I just love that scripture when I was thinking about the Lord's relationship, right? Christ's relationship with his mother. Um, there were sisters around. There were others there. It was like an intertwining relationship. It was a family that they were walking. But imagine being set like he's in a position of suffering and he's saying okay I have something to give you and I believe that's what he's done with this with the economy like he's allowing us to see what he's actually given us and and can we have gratitude for that right can we um be sober-minded to say like he's on a cross and about to die for me and he's still thinking about me. Like he's still thinking about his sisters. He's still thinking about his brothers. He's still thinking about his mother, right? And um, he um, gave this position. He gave his dear mother, right, to his brother. And then the brother received. So I think like as we see the relationships, we get to see like, oh, Christ gave you to me. Let me not be neglectful. Let me receive, you know, let me receive you as a sister. Let me receive you as a brother. Let me receive you as a father. Let me receive you as a spiritual mother, right? Um, because I can't just insert myself like all of us are saying. We can't insert ourselves to any of these positions. We have to be received. So even as a mother, I need to be taken care of as a mother. I need to... I need my, my children um, to receive um, the word that I'm giving, right? The, the love that I'm giving. And I need them to receive me enough to <laughs> pray for me too, right? As a brother and sister in Christ, as a child in Christ, to, um, to be able to also be humbled as a child and say, I'm sorry, mom, I hurt you. I'm sorry, sister, I hurt you. And even be loving enough to say, you offended me, right? Like, that is love. We, we can't look at it like, oh, um, because I want to love her, I can't tell her what she really did. No, it's like I can't walk out that position without you allowing me. So I need to be allowed into that space. Be, um, as Christ is giving it, we have to receive, you know. So. Praise God. Rachel? Yeah, I had, um, because you were saying, like, you have a need to, right, as a spiritual mother, and um, and I had the question, what brings a spiritual parent or mother, right, pride and joy, and it's that their children walk in truth, and that's how we meet their need as a spiritual mother. That's how, as a daughter, I meet that need for my mother, my spiritual mother, um, and in Proverbs 23, 22, it, it, um, it goes in it goes into that, but but I will read Third John one four. It says, "I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth." So we'll open it up for some questions regarding spiritual motherhood. Does anyone have any?
Yes. Tana. Wait for the mic, sis. <laughs> I just had a question on what scripture you said, Rachel. Um, John. That's a deep question right there. I don't Sorry. know if I can answer that one. <laughs> um, Proverbs. Are you talking about third John? I gave two scriptures. I'll give the first one if anybody else is asking a similar question. Um, Proverbs 23, verses 22 and through 25. And then the, the scripture I just read was 3 John 1, 4. I'm going to mention a scripture as well. Um, Proverbs 6, starting at 20. Um, and it ties into what you're saying, the, um, Rachel. Um, it says, my son, obey your father's commands. And don't neglect your mother's instruction. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. For their command is a lamp, and their instruction is a light. Their corrective discipline is the way to life. And I believe all these things are true because as the relationship in the spirit of God, it is pointing to Christ. There is no way that I can protect anybody, but it's the Holy Spirit that um, moving through us, right? That, That gives you what you need to rest, to know I can go to sleep at night and I'm protected um, because my mother, because my sister, right? Reminded me of that. So I get to rest at night because they're reminding me that I belong to God and he's the one truly protecting me. Um, We are um, filled with the Holy Spirit. So we are beacons of light. And that's the only reason that I could be a lamp to anybody, right? So I think in that, it's um, always pointing to Christ and um, his workings, not our own. Amen. Um, I'm reminded of a, a scripture and... It's in the book of Ruth. Um, it's um, Ruth and Naomi. And there's uh, one um, section of, of that book, a scripture where, Na- um, is it Naomi? Yes, it's Naomi. And she tells Ruth, who's actually her mother-in-law, but um, she says, your God will be my God. And um, that just reminds me uh, there had to be something in her that um, that would produce that, that says, your God will be my God. So I'm willing to follow not just you, but your God, because I know wherever you're going is where your God is directing you. And so I want to be there as well. And so that just reminds me of the role, not just of a spiritual mother, but a sister, and as well as a daughter, because it's, it's, we are we are children, right? We are daughters, and we have the same father. We are sisters. We have the same father, spiritual mother. We're all being and directed, um, being led to and directing others to Christ. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter um, the role because we said in the beginning that it's interchangeable, right? Just think about it. Even in the natural, you can be a mother, as well as a sister, as well as a daughter, all at the same time, right? And how much more so in the spirit. But in that, we are being led to and leading others to Christ, and it's all by the spirit of God. So um, it just made me think of that. It's like, your God will be my God. That's awesome. That is awesome. So um, if any questions, I'm going to open it up just Maybe one or two if anyone has any questions, not specifically on a spiritual mother, but anything that was shared here, this is the time um, to go ahead and ask. Raise your hand. Sandra, way up front, Clarissa. It's a two-part question because as spiritual mothers, when you see your children struggling, um, and as mothers too, when you see your children struggling, um, how do you deal with it? And even 
trusting the spirit in yourself because I think that's where my struggle is, is, is trusting the spirit in me and how to deal with the situations when they come and um, trusting in that moment. Um, Cause like Rachel was speaking of it earlier, right? When we're in the moment with our children and it's, it's coming at us. Right. And we're dealing with that and we're trying like, do, you know, you can't like stop and, and all I'm asking is like, Holy Spirit, help me, you know? But how do you deal with that in that situation? Mm -hmm. Okay. So praise God, because that just brings, um, like, the awareness that we don't know everything, right? We don't know everything. Elders and pastors, be prepared, because we may need to call on you for clarity. <laughs> um, but I think, like, in the question um, that you asked, you may not be saying this, but... Just for clarity's sake, I'm going to bring it up because it was said. So the way I trust the spirit in me is with the awareness that the same spirit that is in me is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. So if I believe that, then I'm trusting 100% that what I'm being led to do is from God himself. The only way I will doubt it is because I'm doubting God. So um, will I always want to do what I'm led to do? No. And that is in giving and that is in taking away. Because I won't always want to take away from my children. I may want to offer my children the world and God is like, no. That's not what I want for them. And then he may be saying, you know what, it's your last $20, but give it to them because you're pouring, pouring into a work that I'm doing, right? But without the Holy Spirit and leaning on the Holy Spirit and leaning on God, I, I need to know who God is to understand what he's asking me. I need to understand the truth between the flesh and the spirit and what I'm actually feeding. And that awareness only comes from God. So in those whole, um, I guess I would say in the moments of like hardships, I, I have to, we have to just depend on God and ask him, what do you want me to do in these moments? Because it's not going to always be easy. For some, it may be, look easy. It may be like, man, they just have this peace and um, they're surrendering and it looks easy for them. But we truly don't know someone's alone time with the Lord. We truly don't know the wrestle and the grievance and the guidance that God is giving them to walk in peace. But we can come together and um, build each other up. We can support each other. We can help each other um, um, understand and be vulnerable, right? And be honest and not like... Um, suppress all those things, suppress the hardships. We're able to be honest and say like, man, it's hard for me to do these things. I'm, I'm struggling with hearing God's direction and then we can help each other because I don't think um, none of us are called to do it on our own, you know, and that's part of him sending the Holy Spirit. Um, but it's just, um, and what are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to accomplish um, like a temporary solution? Or are we looking eternal? So when I'm making these decisions for my children, I'm thinking like, how is this going to affect their relationship with God? How is this, is this going to hinder uh, their salvation? You know, am I going to be in the way? Am I giving them something that is going to cause them to look away from God? And um, so those are um, the leadings by the Holy Spirit. So anytime if there's like a confusion and we're worried about our children, but we're giving them um, a protection, we're giving them a solution that points away from God, then we know that is from the flesh. That's not from the Holy Spirit. And um, just fully trusting um, that God has all authority. He has all power. And um, sometimes there is areas where, you know, like in the word, it's, um, the man comes and he says, um, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. So we have to sit in that with ourselves before we step into like, let me tell my children what to do. And the fact that they can see us, like 
I don't know how many times like my brothers and sisters have seen me in a place of weakness and like I need God. Well, that goes no difference. My children need to see I need God. So when they're desperate and they're without me, oh, I need God on my own separate from my mom, right? So I, or separate from my um, parents, right? I think that if anybody wants to add to that. I think what I'm kind of hearing too is, uh, is it the, are we wanting God's will more than our own for our children? I, and I'm hearing Isaac, uh, Abraham and Isaac, right? Like I'm seeing that visual of putting him on the altar. He was going to kill his son because he wanted God's will more than his own. He was willing to surrender and he was being obedient to what God has asked him. So, I think that's a, and I believe, Sandra, that you do want God's will. And he's working in the midst of these things. That's why these trials are still here, because he's refining you in that area, right? And all of us, if you have kids, you know it's not easy being a parent. And we do desire them to want a relationship with the father, and, but we can't make them. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like I had to learn. I had to learn with my husband. I couldn't make him want God. God had to go in and call him as his son, you know, but may he empower you with the prayers to pray over them and um, strengthen you and allow you to let your hands off of it and just be able to watch him do it because then he's glorified. We can't take the glory, you know, so. I'm just going to add real quick because the Lord was stirring. I know we have to be mindful of time, um, but but just the nurturing, right? If you're asking for a, a physical son or daughter, like, it goes back to what was said earlier, right? What do they need, Lord? Right? Let me give them what they truly need. And we know that's Christ. Praise God. Um, well, if there is not anything else, we're going to go ahead and close. I pray that... Oh, is there a hand? Mar. <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. So I feel like I have to ask, so I'm going to. This is almost like a, how did you find out you were pregnant question. But um, for each of you who have been called to be spiritual mothers, how did God communicate that to you? How did the Spirit, like, confirm that in your own lives? I guess I'll just say, like, it's almost, it is, like, you're right. I wasn't pregnant, now I am, you know? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was a perfect example. Thank you, Lord. Um, yeah. Um, surprise. <laughs> Right? Like, I didn't have sisters, and now I do, right? I mean, we're talking spiritual, because we're, I think when we're being drawn to God, we're, we're always asking God, like, put more brothers and sisters in my life that love you, that are going after you. And I think that that same thing, like, he fills your cup, and you, sometimes you don't, you're receiving things you didn't know you needed, you're receiving things you didn't know you wanted, Right? So it is almost like an instant, like um, an instant feeling where um, an awareness of like, just like when we meet each other, sometimes there's like, oh my gosh, I love this sister. I don't know her, but I love her. And um, and it's the same thing. Like there is a, a different love and nurturing um, of a child, right? An awareness of like, oh, I see this person as a child or they remind me of this um like son daughter you know just this feeling of like um I don't know I all I could say is it's the Holy Spirit um because there is an instant like I love her like she's mine I love him like he's mine right and God is saying um yes continue in that um lean into that because they are mine um I wanted to add because I was immediately reminded of Mary when the angel came to her and he says, you shall bear a son. 
right? And it's like that's as a as a mother, a spiritual mother, um, right? If you're a woman of God, <laughs> you're a spiritual mother to someone, you know? And so, but the reckon it has to be a confirmation, right? Of like the spirit of God showing you, right? That you're bearing a son, you're bearing a daughter, you know, like that physical test, right? To be like, you know, you're like, I think I am, but then there's the doubt that comes in. It's just like, once you get the confirmation, it's like, okay, now I can act freely. But it's like, we trust in the work of God, right? I don't, I think it's important not to focus on like, I got to find a spiritual daughter or son now to try to, um, to try to nurture because then you're going into works, right? And I don't believe that's what you're saying, but I feel led to say that like, don't try to put yourself in a position, just be a child of God. And those other relationships will take place. Um, and, and that comes with, um, with the heart of humility saying, I have, I have no need but you, God, right? Even going back to Sister Stacy, I had to see that I need God from her. And now there's freedom. We got to walk that out. Praise God, right? That he would bring us into relationship with one another so that we can, one, give Christ, receive Christ, um, because we are walking with Christ. Praise God. All right. So we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. Father, thank you for this time. I pray that, I pray that your spirit was poured out, Lord God, that, that you have tuned the ears to hear what you were speaking during this time, Lord. I pray that the hearts were positioned to receive, Lord, and that there was freedom to understand your economy and how you position and organize your family for your glory, Lord God. Father, I pray if there's any additional questions that, that you would um, that you would not allow the enemy to stifle those questions, Lord God, but that they would come. And Father, if there's any um, struggle, Lord God, that you know where the place of struggle is. And would you would you meet our brother or a sister at that point of struggle, Lord, and bring revelation, Lord? And so, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you that you are so faithful to um, reveal, so faithful to give understanding, so faithful to prepare the hearts, Lord God. And, Father, I pray that you would continue to minister to us, continue to speak to us, Lord. What a privilege it, it, it is to be able to hear you when you speak, Lord God. Sometimes we lose sight of that. Like, Lord, you speak and you cause us to hear you, Lord. And I just thank you for that, Lord God. So would you continue to speak to us throughout this day? Continue to minister to us wherever you lead us, Lord God. We know that you are there because you are Emmanuel and you are with us, Lord God. And we can rest in that, Lord God. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for the house of God. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord God. Thank you for all of who you are, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.